So is it uh, believe believe magic o five four sent me a message. I think somebody else asked me this too. Uh, in the exact same words, can you please do a video on a how to do a burning spell? Was that as I've mentioned uh, in our religion, we like to burn things, so that that could cover a lot of ground. Uh, it would depend on which things you're you're gonna want to burn. Um, so I'm gonna answer it in what, what I think the uh, what I think the question is. Um, a petition ritual. I think that's what you're driving at. A petition is a small written uh, prayer. Uh, could somebody, sometimes be a sigil or a magical statement of intent that's uh, burned in the middle of the ritual. So you have, uh, have your circle up, have your god and goddess called, you know, all your different candles, incense, all that stuff still as you normally would have. But then the central center portion of the ritual, the magic, is uh, this very old school thing called a petition ritual. And we do, we do similar things a lot of the time, like when we're doing sigil magic and that kind of thing. Um, but uh, originally, a petition ritual had some specifics. It was supposed to be done on virgin parchment. Uh, I don't recommend the, the virgin parchment thing. Um, anymore because basically uh, it's, it's definitely not recycled. It's paper that's never been used for anything. Uh, witches shouldn't be the only people not recycling. So uh, I don't recommend the virgin parchment, but uh, whatever paper you're going to use, you know, cleanse it, uh, consecrate it. Watch the video about consecration. Um, the video on statement of intent, I think, is, is really important and really uh, one of the things you're looking at, and also maybe the sigil magic videos. I think all those videos together, if you hadn't seen them, um, will, will help you. But basically, a, a written prayer, if you will, or a quest to the gods, um, specifically what you want to have happen. Um, and that's a burning ritual. There, there's a lot of ways to do it, and the, the, the stuff surrounding the ritual is what makes it uh, potent or not. Uh, what deities you used? How did you call them? What energy did you use to call them? You know, did you sing? Did you dance? Um, did you just meditate, focus on the thing? Um, did you enter a state of gnosis for seven days while doing this? There's a lot of a lot of ways, and um, though the components in the center of the spell don't change, the amount of energy that you put into it, what you did with it, um, change. So. I guess I'll go from, from what I've said in other videos. If you're going to do a petition ritual, it uh, would be best to do it uh, in a dead language, as I've said in other videos. One of the languages that we don't use for anything. Um, you know, like old magicians used to use uh, Latin and, uh, and Greek, <laughs> those kind of things. But we would probably use, you know, uh, runes or Theban script. Uh, you know, there's a billion types of runes. There's uh, Etruscan, or is it, no, yeah, it's Etruscan, uh, they call them runes, but they're not really runic, uh, maybe some of the characters look similar, but in Etruscan runes, uh, most of the characters are, are pretty similar to English, um, just pointy, I guess, um, but dead language, <clears throat> so a language that you're not using to do your taxes, uh, and I would... Even though if I was writing the thing out, I would incorporate some sigil magic too, you know, add some symbols on the paper that uh, go with what I'm asking for, you know, like an earth triangle for money, uh, maybe a little hearts for love, who knows, but, uh, and a sigil, and, and your sigil, uh, like sign it with your sigil, and you should probably have a sigil uh, for your witch name. So, if, well, first, you need a witch name, and then a sigil. For your witch name, and then you start signing all of your magical things with that sigil, and over time that builds force and, and authority. And when you're uh, when you write it, it's uh, it's potent that way. It's like a big period at the end, or exclamation point. Um, another thing that. Uh, People a long time ago replaced the old rituals of writing a thing in blood. 
And we've heard that. We've heard, you know, sign it in blood. And, and for some reason, that's, that's potent. We know that's potent if you sign a thing in blood. Um, problem is blood coagulates and uh, doesn't make good ink that way. And, it, and it's hard to get enough to write a whole letter. So a long, 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 long time ago, witches started using uh, magical inks. Some of the most common uh, dragon's blood ink uh, for extra force in the thing that you want. Dove's blood ink for more passive things or love spells, that's kind of, that kind of thing. Uh, bat's blood ink for uh, uh, protection, counter magics, and nasty things. Uh, should be noted, none of those things contain the blood of those animals. And actually, all three inks... Uh, drastically similar recipes but dragon's blood for force does blood for passive um, and uh, bat's blood for active <laughs> um, the, the thing that the, the, the thing a lot of people leave out no, none of the books hardly ever mention anymore because nobody wants to uh, talk about blood magic anymore <laughs> Three drops of your blood into the ink was the standard. So you have your ink, you take three drops of your blood, extract them however you can. Uh, in the solution, in the ink, shake it up, mix it up. So you got a little bit of your blood in all that ink, and uh, everything you write is programmed with your DNA, with your force. It's going absolutely going to work for you because it's a part of you. You're writing with little microscopic pieces of yourself. And that was the old way. And I, I think that's what your uh, Believe Magic 054, I think it was. Um, I think that's what you're asking, burning spell. Now, where are you gonna burn that? Uh, typically, uh, to, for, for a really good, good petition spell, you're going to burn that with your offerings. So it's going to be going up with the smoke of your offerings. Be it, you know, incense. Um, throw it in with your incense burner. If you're doing stick incense, that's not going to work very well. So you need like a cauldron or a burning vessel. And uh, with your other offerings that you're offering up to your deities, you then, in the middle of your ritual, the high point, the peak of your ritual, burn that petition, send it up with the smoke, with your prayers. Or if you have other offerings, you know, if you're burning fruit, food, tobacco, whatever you're offering up, that the smoke of your petition goes up with the smoke of the offering. So they're associated with each other. And uh, I just have a few things I came up with off the top of my head, but now I think about it, I think that's... Uh, that's a potent little bit there. That's some old school stuff. I think that's what you were asking. And um, most of the stuff that I just said, I can't think of any book that I'd find any of that in there. So you probably don't already know all that uh, already. So there's uh, my suggestions on, uh, on burnt offerings. Um, I am Uncle Birch. I have a Facebook now. You can like me on Facebook at Birch Tree Craft. Not to be confused with Birch Tree Craft Vermont. Who the hell saw that one coming? And uh, oh, somebody mentioned that I, I always forget to mention uh, that you can you can donate to my ministry at uh, Sacred Grove 913 at hotmail.com. You can PayPal it to there and send me millions of dollars. Uh, through PayPal. I don't know. I don't know if you can send millions of dollars through PayPal, but give it a shot. What the hell? Sacred Grove 913. All one word. Sacred Grove 913. That's the, the number nine, the number one, the number three. 913 at hotmail.com. And like me on Facebook, Birch Tree Craft. And um, when, you, when you suggest for a video for me to do, I sometimes will do that. There you go. Mary Meat, Mary Part.